Hello, my name is Mike Dysels and welcome to the Light Chefs 2 setup tutorial. This tutorial is a re-recording because for some reason the first upload months ago appears to have disappeared. In this video we will have a look on how to add a Light Chef generator to your scene, how to set this generator up in the inspector panel and how to create multiple systems with different textures and colors. To create a generator you can either right click, go to light and select Light Chefs 2 or you can either go to game object Light, Light Chefs 2. This will place a generator in your scene. The generator will be placed at the location of your current camera, so you can simply reset its rotation. In order to rotate the system correctly, it's best to select pilot mode, rotate your system and align it with the area you want the shafts to come from. One thing you might have noticed in the side panel in the inspector is that inspector view is a lot smaller than it used to be. There used to be a ton of settings that you could tweak. However, for a lot of users, this was quite confusing and tedious when they had to change the system. All those settings are still there in the background, but they have been replaced or they are being set by a simple tool called the direction pointer. Instead of just typing in the shaft angle and uh, the spread and everything, you can simply now just move the stool to control the spread of the shafts and the angle is simply a relation towards the tool itself. Instead of using 15-20 minutes of your time to set up one system, you can do that now within a few seconds by simply moving the stool around. So what's another interesting thing about this? We create a, a simple light source real quick. If you want the system to be related towards the light source, instead of using the old gimmicky procedural animation, you can now simply select this light and drag it in the shaft direction slot and replace it with the direction pointer tool. The system will now orient itself based on that light source. It's way easier now to set up your chocks to be aligned with the light sources in your scene. If the light source gets deleted or anything else, it will be automatically replaced back with the direction pointer. Another big feature that's been introduced in this version is the big option. Instead of using real-time shafts all the time, if they don't need to rotate or don't need to be animated, you can simply bake them now in a single mesh and there will be only one draw call for the complete system. So as you can imagine, this will increase performance quite a lot, especially in mobile devices. If you want, uh, if you do not want the, the baked shafts, simply click generate again and you will get the original system. The safe load features are still here so if you click load, let's use the natural blue example and the settings of that file will be loaded, including the position of our directional pointer. Now uh, in order to adjust the density of the shafts, at the moment I'm using a 10 by 10 uh, row, so this means about 100 shafts are present in the scene, but I can make it even a little bit denser by 20 by 20 generated. As you can see the shafts are now way too big square. So we're also gonna adjust the shaft spacing a bit. Since we're double the shafts we just go half the spacing, generate and we're back in the window. Of course since the shafts work additive the light coming from the shafts will be much brighter since each color is added up to itself. But we can compensate this again by adjusting the shaft intensity. We can also mask the layers that are hit so if you have a water surface and you want the shafts to go through it, simply ignore that layer and the shafts will not collide against it. If we press play we can see if it's working correctly. And since the shafts are dynamic, they will collide against my character controller and we will block the light out. So we have natural light collision. Now another thing that has changed in order to optimize the performance is that each system now uses a shared material which means each shaft will be drawn with the same shader with the same material in one pass. This has a little downside for instance if I duplicate this system and move it to the right and I change the color of the first one we'll have the color changed. This is because both systems are using the same material. If you click in the inspector of the material you can see this over here. So in order to give the second system a different color, we simply have to create a new material. So it will now have its own shared material, which will be utilized by all the shafts, but it's no longer dependent on the material of the other system. So both systems use a shared material now, but it's only used by their own shafts. So if I click generate this one, we now correctly have two different colors. Another thing that users might see missing is the option to select different casting modes. The system will always defaultly use the square cast, it always has, but it used to have circular and vortex casts. These were mathematical equations to offset the shafts, 
but they were not compatible with the new simpler setting system because of the way the orientation was calculated. And to my feeling, they never had the quality that I wanted. So the users now have two options. They either use the default square cost, which you can see now, or they can enable mesh cost over here. And in here, you can create custom spawn locations for the shaft. So instead of a row being calculated, each vertex will spawn a cost. So if you have a special shape, let's say a clearing of a forest, which has multiple openings because of the trees and the leaves, you can simply go to any modeling software, click the vertexes you need. It doesn't matter whether you have quads or triangles because they are ignored, only the vertex locations used. And simply place vertices on the locations that you want the shafts to spawn at. So if we use this sphere mesh as an input, you can see that the shafts are now cast from within a sphere. If we increase the spacing a bit, it will be more clear. Each shaft is casted from and within a point in this sphere. Another thing which was present in the previous version and still is today in this one is the shaft texture. The shaft texture is simply a one-to-one -one UV layout that gets stretched over the shaft itself to give this uh, variable uh, density of the light. So you can very simply swap that out, generate it and get a different feel of the light. You can also create your own one. Since it's an additive multiplication of the color, black will be ignored and white will be visible. It can be 1024 by 1024 or 512 by 512. And that's basically it, then you have your custom uh, texture. Another thing that has been removed, which was in the previous version, is the ability to sample the texture color of the texture behind a surface. The reason this is removed is because it's very performance intensive. It required the surface behind to always have a mesh collider on it, which is pretty expensive by default. And the more shafts you had, each shaft sampled the color of the pixel behind it, which slowed the system down incredibly. So in favor of that, that system is removed, but you can still have multicolored shafts by coloring the shaft texture itself. So if you want to have some kind of stained glass window effect, simply have a multicolored texture, drag it in, generate it, and you now have multicolored shafts instead of just one single color. So the thing I recommend to do is if you have such a setup where you have stained glass or anything and you used to have a pixel sampling, simply grab a texture with the same color pattern or the same colors and drag it into the texture slot, just like with this stained glass one. And you should be good to go. The effect will be very similar. There's almost no difference to be noticed, except that you have no performance overhead. And even the stained glass one can be baked into one static mesh and the colors will be conserved. So that's basically it. That's all you have to know about getting started with this system. There's always a few presets available that you can start from. You can also save your own. Also, there's a manual provided with this version. That's a little bit nicer than just a simple text file made in the script editor. It explains all the components I highlighted today. It goes a little bit in depth with how the system works, uh, how each shaft is set up and if it uses real time. Uh, and it has a, a quick FAQ if you have any questions, uh, you might find your answers there. You can also go to my website, which should also be linked on the store page. Go to Unity Assets, Assets, to also Analyze Chats. And within there you find the product page with the same FAQ. But also if you want to contact me, you can go to the contact page and simply go fill in this form. That's about it. So I hope everybody uh, has a lot of fun with the new system. I hope it makes editing and setting them up much, much easier. Have a good day. Bye.